Shalom, brothers and sisters. The title of this video is The Sabbath Day and What You Didn't Know. Remember, all I'm offering you is the truth. You should already know that the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week or Saturday according to the calendar. If you're still struggling with which day of the week is the Sabbath, then you're not ready for this lesson. You probably won't understand what I will show you. Most people think the Sabbath is just the Sabbath. There are two different Sabbaths in the Bible. Most people think the day is just the day. There are two different days in the Bible. We will cover the two different Sabbaths. When the Sabbath day begins, the day as it pertains to keeping the Sabbath and the day as it pertains to keeping time. This should help tie doctrines that other brothers have together into one that is strong and correct. The Babylonian Gregorian and other calendars are an invention of the devil. When you tie in the timekeeping that Yahweh gave us with the calendars invented by the devil's children, it doesn't mix. It's like oil and water. The Babylonians, they begin at evening or night. And then the West altered it to the middle of the night at midnight or the sixth hour of the night. The 24-hour day, 60-minute hour, 60-second minute is an ancient Egyptian and Babylonian creation. The calendar system we use today, it is named after Pope Gregory the 13th, who introduced it in October 1582. The calendar was a refinement to the Julian calendar involving a 0.002% correction in the length of the year. Why is Edom always trying to correct something or make better that which the Most High created? He does it because he plays God. See Wikipedia and other sources for more detail. So, do you think that which was established by Yahweh needed correction by man? The other nations are heathens? I think not. These things were introduced to create confusion and make sure that Yahweh's people would remain out of tune with the Most High by not worshiping Him correctly and at the proper times. We were told for a reason not to follow the ways of the heathen by doing as they do will cause us to sin or be in error of understanding. You know, like keeping weekly evening to evening Sabbath, like those fake Khazar Jews in Israel and around the world right now. If you know they're fake, why are you following the things they do? Yes, that's right. Evening to evening Sabbath is not what we kept. The Sabbath day is kept from sunrise to sunset. The day as it pertains to daylight in which men would work and not the day as it pertains to time, a daylight period and a night period being one day of time. Now, let's look at the two different Sabbaths. You only see the word Sabbath in the Bible. And that's a translation thing that they did when there are actually two. There's the Shabbat, and then there's the Shabbat one. You're going to come to understand what the difference between those two here very quickly. The Sabbath is what we see in the Bible, but the word Sabbath actually has two different meanings in Hebrew. Scripture will help you see the difference between the two as we go forward. Remember, we have to really pay attention to what is said and how it is said. You know, have ears to hear and eyes to see. Let's look at this information I provided for you and then get into the scriptures. Sabbath days. These are weekly Sabbath days. No work of any kind. It shall be a rest unto you. Shabbat one days, monthly feasts, new moons, which are the beginning of months. Work may be done except on the seventh month. Feast of trumpets, holy convocation, no servile work. Work in connection to the celebration may be done. Annual feasts, Passover night of the 14th day. Work may be done. Unleavened bread. First day, holy convocation, no servile work, 
Work in connection to the celebration may be done. Unleavened bread, the second day through the fifth day. Any work may be done. Unleavened bread, the seventh day. Holy convocation, no servile work. Work in connection to the celebration may be done. Feast of first fruits, this is uh, sheaf waving. Any work may be done. Feast of weeks, work may be done. Feast of trumpets, holy convocation, no servile work. Work in connection to celebration may be done. Day of Atonement, Holy Convocation, no work of any kind. This is a day of rest, and we are to afflict our souls, and we afflict our souls by fasting. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Feast of Booths, Tabernacles, first day. Holy Convocation, no servile work. Work in connection to the celebration may be done. We are to rejoice before Yahweh, our Elohim, seven days. Feast of Booths, Tabernacles, second day through the seventh day. No servile work. Work in connection to the celebration may be done. We're rejoicing during that week before Yahweh. Feast of Booths, Tabernacles, eighth day or last great day. Holy convocation, no servile work. Work in connection to the celebration may be done. So we have seen in the information I showed you the difference between the Shabbat and Shabbat one day. Now let's prove it with scripture. Shabbat one. We go to Leviticus 23 verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. The fifteenth day of the seventh month was the feast of tabernacles and a holy convocation. We were not allowed to do any servile work. You will see that we were allowed to do some work that pertained to the feast of celebration because this is a Shabbat one day and not a regular weekly Sabbath day. Leviticus 23, verse 39. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willow of brook, and ye shall rejoice before Yahweh, your Elohim, seven days. So the Sabbath, which is the weekly Sabbath or Shabbat, no manner of work is allowed. That's a day of rest. The Shabbat one, that's an annual feast day. Certain work is allowed. No servile work is allowed. Those are two different Sabbaths. We gather branches for our temporary dwellings on that feast day or Shabbat one day. We did some work, but not servile work. We did work in connection with the celebration by constructing booths. The new moon, which means new month, was a feast celebration each month. So every new moon or every new month at the beginning of that month, that first day, we would get together and we would feast. And no servile work was to be done. Look at this. Go to Amos 8, verse 4. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? See, these people were complaining because... On regular uh, new months or new moons, they were doing these things. They were selling and, and carrying on, and they wanted to do the same thing on the seventh month, the first day of the seventh month, which is trumpets. They wanted to 
hurry up and get that day out of the way so they could go back to ripping their people off and buying and selling. They wanted to sell and do servile work in the field but couldn't. Why? Because the new moon day on the seventh month was also a Shabbat one or annual feast day. It was the Feast of Trumpets. This is the only new moon or new month day where no servile work or selling can be done, only work in connection to the celebration. Numbers 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Leviticus 23, verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets, and holy convocation. This is a new moon day, which means new month, because it's the first day of the month. We recognize the beginning of every month, and the seventh month was a memorial of blowing the trumpets. Verse 25, Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall have an offer, an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. We were told to do no servile work on this Shabbat one day, or annual feast day. No servile work means no working for money, personal gain, or personal interest. You can do servile work on all the other new moon days or beginning of months without restrictions. Numbers 10, verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. The Most High told us to blow the trumpets in the day of our gladness, in our solemn days, and in the beginnings of our months. That means we blew the trumpets every month and we got together for a feast celebration. No work restrictions were given except for the first day of the seventh month, which was the memorial of blowing the trumpets. This is what the people were complaining about in Amos 8, 5, saying, When will the new moon be gone, or when will the new moon of the seventh month be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Shabbat one, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. In the monthly offerings on the new moon days, the Most High gave us instruction but does not say anything about work restrictions. Look at this. Numbers 28, verse 11. And in the beginning of your months, ye shall offer burnt offerings unto Yahweh, two young bullocks, and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. Now read down through verse 15, and you won't see anything about work restrictions. The Most High makes it clear when he wants us to do or not do something, so we don't get punished for doing our own thing. Look at this concern in the first day of unleavened bread, a Shabbat one day. Numbers 28, verse 17. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no manner of servile work therein. So on this Shabbat one day or annual feast, we're told not to do any manner of servile work. You can cook food for that celebration day or do work in connection to that day because it's a Shabbat one day. You cannot cook on a Shabbat day, which is a weekly Sabbath day, because it's a day of rest. The Most High set that up back in Genesis during the creation week. Let's look at Passover. Exodus 12, verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. It's talking about a lamb. The lamb was kept until the fourteenth day, but at the end of that day, during the night, they killed it and cooked it. Why were they slaughtering animals and cooking on the Sabbath, Passover night? It was not a weekly Sabbath or Shabbat, day of rest. 
Remember, Passover night in Egypt, we kindled a fire and roasted a lamb. The feast days are a different kind of Sabbath. The feast days are Shabbat one days. When the Sabbath day begins, let's begin with Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, the Most High created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. There was a period of darkness before the light was created. We will see that the Most High will use the night to separate the day, giving a natural period of rest between days, or putting a space between days. And the Most High said, Let there be light, and there was light. And the Most High saw the light, that it was good. And the Most High divided the light from the darkness. You see, the Most High separated the light from the darkness. The day and the night are separate. This is very important to remember in understanding the day as it pertains to keeping the Sabbath. The Most High also said that the light was good, letting us know that the light and darkness would represent good and evil, as you will see in your Bible studies. Look here. Job 19, verse 8. He had fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he had set darkness in my paths. Job 30, verse 26. When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. Proverbs 4, verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. You get the point? Let's continue. Genesis 1, 5. And the Most High called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. There is a period of darkness or night between each day. It can also be said that the evening represents death because during that time of night we sleep and sleep was represented as death as some scriptures point out. Light or the day represents life or living. So what is he saying here? Is that there was a period of darkness, then a period of light, which was the first day. The evening and the morning is being given to us to show a cycle of time, to use as a measure of time, the day as it pertains to time. Just because the evening is mentioned before the day does not mean that the day begins at evening, sunset or night. I will prove that the day as it pertains to time begins at sunrise. I will also prove that the day as it pertains to the Sabbath begins at sunrise and end at sunset. Be patient. It's coming. Genesis 1, verse 14. And the Most High said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Two different celestial bodies, the sun and moon, for day and night, to help us measure time, days, and years. Let me say that again. To help us measure time, days, and years. So we can see that the day as it pertains to time has two periods in it, light and darkness. Twelve hours of light and twelve hours of darkness. The Most High used the two periods together for a complete cycle and called it a day as it pertained to creation. He only worked or created during the day or period of light and did nothing during the night or period of darkness. We know this because Genesis 2 verse 2. And on the seventh day, the Most High ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And the Most High blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which the Most High had made. You see, he was saying nothing about the evening and the morning was the seventh day, and he rested. He only created during the daylight period or day. That's why he tells us to keep the Sabbath day holy and do no work. The seventh daylight period 
was to be a day of rest. We rested at night anyway. Our animals rested at night and worked during the day. That's why we have a day of rest from sunrise to sunset. Don't confuse the craziness of today's times with what the Most High intended for Israel. People work 24-7 now to maximize the raping of the earth and fleecing of the people. Everything is out of order. Psalms 82 verse 5 They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Genesis 1 16 And the Most High made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And the Most High set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and the Most High saw that it was good. We see again the Most High said to divide the light from the darkness. They are separate as it pertains to the Sabbath, which is a daylight period. There are two feasts that the Most High tells us to begin at evening. Understand what I'm saying here. Listen again. There are two feasts that the Most High tells us to begin at evening. Exodus 12, verse 18. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Passover began at evening on the fourteenth day at night, and Passover ended before sunrise. We know this because when we were in Egypt, on Passover night, we killed the lamb. We ate the lamb and unleavened bread, and death was coming through the land. And then we left out the next day at sunrise. That evening was not the beginning of the new day or the 15th day. When the sun rose on the 15th day, that was the first day of unleavened bread, a holy convocation, and we kept it until sunset or evening. You get the same thing in Leviticus. Look here. Leviticus 23, verse 5. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is Yahweh's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. The nighttime period on the 14th was Passover. The 15th daylight period of Abib or April was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The first day or daylight period, we were to have a holy convocation. When did we have holy convocations at night? And Passover is not a holy convocation. Passover and atonement are the only times the celebrations begin in the evening and end in the evening. That is why the Most High specifically, specifically tells us to go evening to evening. If he is specifically telling us to go evening to evening for these two feast days, then that shows you that the weekly Sabbaths are not evening to evening. Because if they were, there would be no need to tell us to go evening to evening for these two feasts. Don't try to include your Christian Bible studies you participate in at night or your Christian false church gatherings that take place at night. Holy convocations took place during the day. Let's look at the Day of Atonement. We go to Leviticus 23, verse 27. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a Day of Atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Verse 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. The ninth day of the month at evening or sunset, we were to start afflicting our souls by not eating or drinking. Simply put, we were to fast. On the tenth day during the daylight period, we were to have a holy convocation and continue afflicting our souls. This is one of the two feasts or Sabbaths or Shabbat ones that the Bible tells us to start at evening. 
if every Sabbath or day begins at evening, then what sense does it make for the Most High to specifically tell us to observe these two feasts from evening to evening? Come on, y'all. Gotta think. That makes no sense. We know that Passover, which took place at night, and unleavened bread, which took place during the day, when we rolled out of Egypt, are two separate events that took place back to back. So that explains evening to evening for that Shabbat one celebration. With atonement, it makes sense that the Most High told us to start at evening because he knew his people. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. If we did not start the fast at sunset, we would wait until 5 a.m. just before the sun rise and have a big breakfast, drink a quart of water, floss and brush our teeth, and be fresh to endure the Day of Atonement 12 hours, sunrise to sunset. Now that wouldn't be much of an affliction, now would it? For that reason, the Most High told us to begin on the ninth day at sunset, stop eating and drinking. Because I want you hungry and thirsty when the sun rise. So the Most High told us to start on the evening of the ninth day at sunset. So by the time the sun rose, we will be hungry and thirsty. Afflicting our souls during the day of atonement, 12 hours, sunrise to sunset. Remember Passover. Unleavened bread and atonement are the only Sabbaths or Shabbat ones and feasts that Yahweh tells us to begin in the evening. That's why the Sabbath day begins at sunrise and ends at sunset, not evening to evening. The Babylonian day is from evening to evening. And those fake Jewish people in our land today and around the world observe the Babylonian system. If you know those people over there are fake, why are you trying to do what they do? Tell me that. Why are you trying to do what they do? Genesis 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, the Most High ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. He rested on the seventh day. What happened to the evening and the morning was the seventh day? He makes no mention of the evening or night because the Sabbath day is the daylight period from sunrise to sunset. That's when we rest from work to keep it holy. He rested during the daytime when people normally would work. He's being an example to us here. You know, things written in the past were written for us today. People rested anyway after the sun went down, or should I say, they did no work in the dark. Look here. John 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Now, that particular scripture has a couple of meanings. It, it means what I'm telling you now, that we work during the daytime. But it all this is also talking about the time is coming when it's going to get really bad in this world. And ain't nobody going to be out here teaching. It also means that. This scripture is a precept to what I just said, and it's a parable to changing times ahead today we have lights and wickedness rules and greed for money and wealth is the goal of most people so this world has people working 24 7 this is not what took place back then and this is not what yahweh wanted for his people he didn't want us to be worked like hebrew slave that's why he delivered us and will deliver us one last time the night was for rest, and Yahweh created during the day and rested on the seventh daylight period and made that seventh daylight period holy, the Sabbath or Shabbat. Exodus 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Verse 18, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month, at even. We're going to jump back to verse 14. 
And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Numbers 33, 3. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover. The children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. You see, the night of the Passover couldn't be the beginning of the 15th day because the scripture says we ate unleavened bread on the night of the 14th and departed Ramses on the 15th day, that daylight period. The night of the 14th, we were eating unleavened bread and lamb and the Egyptians were dying. On the next day, on the 15th day, at sunrise, we began to leave. We started fleecing the Egyptians from their gold and silver and whatever else we wanted. That was a new day after the Passover, which was on the night of the 14th day. We didn't roll out of Egypt at night. We left during the day when they could see us. Remember, the Egyptians were dying the night of Passover. The day begins at sunrise and ends at sunset as it pertains to Sabbaths and Shabbat ones. The day begins at sunrise and ends just before sunrise at the end of the nighttime period as it pertains to timekeeping of days, weeks, months, and years. We know our ancestors understood the difference between the day and day and night. Look at this. Esther 4 verse 16. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. You see, Esther broke those three days down, night or day so that it would be clear for us in our understanding today and in our time. A regular fast was just during the daylight period, unlike atonement, which is evening to evening. But Esther told them to do it night and day. Esther and our brothers and sisters back then had to show the Most High they were serious. So they went night and day on that fast. Christ made it clear that he would be in the grave three days and three nights because he didn't want someone to think he was in the grave just three daylight periods. Mark 15, verse 42. And now when the evening was come because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, when nighttime came, it was still the preparation day, the day before the Sabbath. The nighttime period was the tail part of the daylight period, which came before it. You see, that evening was the day before the Sabbath, a different time period. Jonah 4, verse 7. But the Most High prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. See, the morning or sunrise was the next day. Matthew 27, verse 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Yahawashai. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. Christ is dead, so this was the night of unleavened bread. He couldn't be left on the cross or tree. Look here. Deuteronomy 21 verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of the Most High, that thy land be not defiled, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee for an inheritance." Remember, he died during the daytime and was still on the cross early that night when Arimathea got him down. He had to be buried that day before the sun rose again because it says, Thou shalt in any wise bury him 
that day. The night is the tail end of the day as it pertains to a cycle of time. The night period represents a time of sadness, death, or sleep and emptiness. Mark 12, verse 27. He is not the Elohim of the dead, but the Elohim of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. Remember the Most High, He is the Elohim of the living and not the dead. The day period represents a time of joy, life, awareness, and fullness of the things seen. The night will soon go away. So what happens when there is no more night? How will the day begin? If the night goes away, how will the day begin? Let's look at Revelations 21, 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. So our gates will be open continually. Revelations 22, verse 5. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Most High giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. People say our day begins at evening or night. How can the day begin if there is no more night or evening? We just going to stop having days? Remember, the Most High change not. That is why the day is from sunrise to sunset. We just read in Revelations 21-25 and Revelations 22-5 that there will be no more night or evening. The day will begin because the day begins with light at sunrise, as I have shown, and not darkness. The evening is not counted as the beginning, but light is the beginning. Someone might say, it was dark before the Most High created the light. Yes, it was. But remember, the Most High, which is light, existed long before he created this universe that was dark. So light always came before darkness and will outlive darkness and there will be no more night where we will live. Nuff said. Key to remember. There are two different days in the Bible. One day pertains to the Shabbat and Shabbat ones, daylight period only. The other day pertains to a cycle of time 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. Key to remember, there are two different Sabbaths, the Shabbat, weekly day of rest, and the Shabbat one, feast days. I hope there is light for you to see all that I presented to you concerning the Shabbat, the Shabbat one, and when the day begins. With that, I say, good day and shalom.